Hi. Hello. Wow, there's already live 59 people. Live. That guy's wrong. All right. Hello. Happy holidays. How was the sound just before we go? Uh-oh. Uh, sorry. So we're here at Baron's parents' house. Um, the scamp is in Oregon. We're here for the holidays. And we thought we would make this video answering a bunch of questions. I put out a, a thing on Instagram to get a bunch of questions from people and we're gonna answer them because then hopefully people can watch this later and if you're not live, it'll still be an interesting video. But if you are live, hello. This is so fun. Thanks for being here. Hello, hello, hello. I'm gonna pull this up real quick while we're... Caw Caw Burr. Hello from Indiana. So we'll probably pay most attention to these questions here for a little while so that this video can kind of stand alone. And then we will answer all of your questions in chat once we finish these. That's what you just said, yeah? Yes. Okay. So first question from Miss Mary Lou. Baron's got YouTube questions down here and I've got other questions. What's been the biggest benefit of going tiny and biggest challenge? Biggest benefit is probably freedom. Being able to do and go wherever we want and not have to work so much. And biggest challenge? Mm, I guess just learning to be dynamic. Work with all different places and um, figure all the things out. But that's part of what's so fun about it too. I think my biggest, the biggest benefit is time. We have so much more time than ever. I've been able to get really good at a lot of different crafts because of time. And biggest challenge has probably been learning how to live without running water. But now it's not so much of a challenge anymore. True. Uh, Rachel, as kids, what did you want to be when you grew up? And is it similar to what you're doing now? Do you want to answer first? You want me to? I think high school, college, I wanted to be video director, film director. Um, then post-college, I was thinking about like going into makeup and stuff, but still stuck with video editing the whole time, and now I'm still doing that. That's amazing. I wanted to be Steve Irwin or Jeff Corwin. And you're doing that, or, kind of. Um, what was his name, the last guy? I can't remember his name. But um, I'm effectively Steve Irwin now. I would like to make a video on YouTube next time we go to a desert environment and catch a bunch of reptiles and kind of show them to the camera and stuff. That would be fun. We did that, or he did that one time, and I accidentally deleted all the footage. It was super yeah. cool. He caught a rattlesnake. And transplanted it to a safer place so it didn't get killed. But we deleted it. Yeah, it's okay though. Nine ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? Here we go. Thank you, Sarah De Stevens. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Love watching you. Cheers. I'm drinking a milk stout. Matt Hansen, $2. Merry Christmas. Oh my gosh. We've got this on my phone. We started live streaming and my yeah, iPad right only had a 10% battery. battery. Thank Heck. you, Josh, for the dollar. And Matt. Hanson, two dollars. Merry Christmas. It's difficult traveling with a dog, so mm -hmm. I guess we'll go to his. Sometimes questions. it's just something to be, like we always have to think about it. It's almost second nature now. The oh my gosh, here we go. Inside $10. of this camp looks so much bigger. Someone said. Yeah, we got a wide-angle lens right now. From Sarah again. Oh wait, well, still thanks, Sarah. Um, this is from T Rocky Box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, T. Um, All right. Next question. Let's do, have you ever tried working with Scamp? You've given them so much business. Kind of. Uh, the company Scamp, I think they just have enough work already, so they don't really care about advertising or anything. And everything that we do is pretty online, and they haven't seemed to really, their online business isn't really much of a thing. They're very... Merry Christmas from Vancouver. So. I don't know, it'd be really awesome to work with Scamp, but so far they haven't seemed super interested in the little bit of contact we've had. Thank you, Crazy Canuck from 
Merry Christmas from Twenty five dollars. Crazy cut up. There was somebody else before that for two dollars. Oh heck. I'm sorry guys. Jeff, you, Jeff. two ninety nine? He's out of his mind. Have a great holiday season. Love the channel. Thanks, oh my Jeff. Gosh. Kevin. Five ninety nine. You guys have figured it out. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, what was the question? From Kevin oh, Pike. We did send a message or a something to Scamp. We ordered a part from them. We ordered some door trim from them, yeah. and I sent them a message in the the order and said, "Hey, we're uh, Elsa and Baron. We're the top. Like we are a really popular channel that lives in a Scamp full time." Love you guys, and they sent back thanks for the support and two scamp koozies. Yeah, so which was neat, but yeah, we would love to work with Scamp at one point, but I don't know if that's a possibility or not. GP the Roadless Traveled, Road Less Traveled, one ninety nine. Merry Christmas! What brewery is your beer? It's Left Hand Milk Stout. We just got three donations in between that. Scroll up a little. Maybe not. There they are. They're coming in fast, but I want to give each one of them time. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're trying to get to all the donations and stuff. While we John DeMarco, 007, California, $10. Is that what that means, CA? $10. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Was hiking the Appalachian Trail scary? Um, no, not at all. It was more fun than I could have ever imagined. Thanks for asking. Jason Young, 399 Are you out of your mind? Thank you. He's got a cheers cup. Oh, cheers, Jason. F Acosta, two ninety nine. Thank you, Charles Lane, ten dollars. Thank you. Oh my gosh, MJ, twenty bucks. Thanks for being you, nineteen ninety nine. Goodness. Tracy Smith, ten dollars. Want to let you know that I'm transitioning my diet since watching both of you. I've learned Aww. so much. Merry Christmas. We are not by Thank no means you. experts, but if you need any encouragement or support, shout. The One Oregon Girl, $5. Merry Christmas. Thank you. And Ben, whoa, whoa. $49.99. <laughs> are you Thanks, out of your ben. mind? Y'all are Thank you. Okay, back to questions. Thank you guys for the donations. Um, if you guys know anybody at Scamp and could, like, get us in a conversation with them, that would be excellent. Nicole, what filming gear do you guys use? This is in a kind of a big secret that we'll get back to. Tammy Huey, four ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? Thank How's you. It going? It's, it's going good. great. So the last three videos have been filmed entirely on my iPhone. A little bit of the most recent video was on DSLR, but um, we decided to get the newest iPhone for since like we're. Well, I broke the camera, the little M fifty that I brought on my hike. I broke it, so then we just got this one thinking, heck, we'll have a camera in our pocket all the time. And it's been great. And the image stabilization in the phone is excellent, and it has three built-in lenses. So you have like a fisheye lens for when we're in the scamp, so you can see everything that's going on. And then we got a MV88 mic for it that plugs into the lightning port, and that's what we're using a right sure, now. A Sure, S-H-U-R-E. Yeah, Sure MV88. They're I think it was only marks. like 250 bucks. Not even, it was one 150. Something. Yeah. And it has great quality, I think. Yeah, it sounds better than our old Mac does, for sure. So that's been really cool. And then we have a Mavic Pro drone. And Spark. And Spark. DJI. Both DJI. I have a Canon D 6D Mark II, and that's been it's amazing. It's an excellent camera. So yeah, There's that's our gear. Holy C heck. laptop. $49.99. Absolutely out of your mind. Thank you. Happy holidays. I'm guessing you're back in Kansas City. Yeah, we are back in Kansas. We had like a, at the very last minute, I was like, Elsa, what do you think about going back to Kansas City for the holidays? So we did it and drove all the way back here. We rented a car so that we just put new tires on the Subaru so we didn't want to wear them out and just got a rental car. Um, Giselle rocks, four ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? I lost my boyfriend five months ago, and your videos have helped me when I can't get out of bed. It makes me feel maybe there is hope and joy one day. Oh, that's sweet. sending you so much love. Lakeland Wayne, nine ninety nine for, for some, some maca coffee. coffee. Oh heck! All right. Thank you. My hectic world, four ninety nine. Keep it up. <laughs> 
and Vadim three two seven five dollars. Hella jealous of you to keep putting up more winter snow videos. We will. We will. Yeah, Don't worry. In the cards, we're gonna stay probably in an area that will likely get snow, just so we can make some more snow videos. Dustin Franks ninety nine ninety nine. Oh my goodness! You are out of your mind. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas, you two from Michigan. At the moment, the world would be a lot more amazing if everyone's outlook on life was the same as yours. Keep doing what you're doing, and I prefer lager over stout. But cheers, anyways. All right. One last thing, kiss camp. Oh. That gal a kiss. Kiss cam. Give that gal a kiss. Oh. That's you. Thanks. And camp <laughs> is at Elsa's parents' house. Right yes, now. that was the first comment we were thinking. I hope nobody asks about camp, but that was the very first comment we got. Uh, Baron's parents are in the process of selling their house. So and they're hiding because they don't want to be on the But they're stream. watching upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, we can't answer questions if all these donations oh, keep coming. Let's just crank through them. Okay, two ninety nine From Chip Miller, do you have a cookbook of your recipes a you cookbook? sell? Who would have ever mentioned that on accident? When they're doing <laughs> <laughs> We're working on a cookbook slowly. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it to go on. Hector get Vega, four ninety nine. My wife and I love your videos and hope you guys are enjoying the holidays. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who keeps donating. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Three ninety nine from Ginger and I think one more two dollars from V W Reefer. Love your videos. Oh, and K L B one ninety nine. Thank hey you. you. Hey there. Okay, next question. Sorry, team. We're trying to keep up with it as best we can. Okay, I thought this one was interesting. I was really proud of this. How did you dig a hole to poop during the blizzard? Um, do you have to dig under the snow? Yes. If you poop on the snow, it's going to melt, and then your poop is going to be on the ground when the snow melts. So Science. what I did was I was just having so much fun. I dug a path and a big, huge open area. Heck. Box car, Bubba, one hundred dollars. Merry Christmas to Thank you, you too. Thank you, Bubba. Two dollars from Karen. Thank you, guys. Baron's got a unibrow. Not all the Maybe way. Slide. Okay, but my I dug my first tree. Um, I dug. It was just basically a big hole. Well, I opened, dug a whole area. If you saw in one of our recent videos, it was basically the size of the. Um, where the panels were and then just a wall of snow around it. Then I dug a big hole, but I learned that that's wrong um, What's wrong? It was wrong because you can't really poop very easily or squat over a very large hole because It's gotta be a deep like hole. You, if you f it has to be a deep hole, but it has to be like a long hole. Yeah. So lesson learned. I made it work. I just had to have like really not super normal stance. That was fine. Um, Chip Miller, to, oh wait, we already here. What? No, we oh, haven't no, no. done that Oh no, Chip one. Miller, can you expedite the cookbook? Merry Christmas, 206. Maybe. Maybe. I was thinking it would be a good thing because it's going to be a nomad cookbook. I was thinking it would be a good thing for the spring because that's when people will be back out camping and stuff. Yeah, like a trench. A trench is a nice yes. idea. Yes, and now I know how to dig a hole like that. Um, from Glenn Ferguson, five dollars. Thank you, Janice Sanders, five ninety nine. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, safe travels. Thank, Thank you. you. We will be driving back up to Oregon soon, so. Uh huh. It took um, like ten three days three, of hour, ten hour drives. Yes. Three we ten saw, hour drives. So, can we name the animals quick that we saw in between Idaho and Colorado? You what try? was our song? We were going to make a song. <laughs> yeah. 5,000 cows. <laughs> Four bald eagles. Three <laughs> prong horn. 300 prong horn, at least. Four golden ones. Two golden <laughs> eagles. <laughs> and a lot of mountain goats on we, the street. We saw like nine mountain goats on the street. We saw bighorn sheep. Uh, several herds of elk. A mama moose and a baby. That was cool. A, two golden eagles, two bald eagles. A fox. A fox. You said elk. A bunch of deer and then pronghorn, like the antelope, in herds of well over 100. It was amazing. 
Okay, next question. FYI, we are answering um, questions that I asked on Instagram. So many just don't. Um, and then we'll get to some live questions here and there too. Karen Johnson, 499, are you out of your mind? Merry Christmas to you three. You've inspired me. I'm Thank so you, Karen. glad. Thank you. Everybody keeps saying unibrow. <laughs> it's hurting my feelings. Really? Yeah. It's the lighting. I mean, yeah. sometimes I have a close to a unibrow. Not today. Not today, fam. All right, next question. We got another donation. Rob and somebody. And another one. Oh my goodness. Love your videos. Peace all over you too. From Bubbly Wow Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Bubble Bubble Boy Wow Wow. And then B Towers. Daria and me love each and every one of your videos. Merry Christmas from Miami. Love you guys. Thank you guys. And Rob and Lisa love you. Awesome. Thank you, Robert Pinoche. Oh my goodness. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Elson Baron, what are your travel plans for 2020? We're just going to wing it. Thank you, Hannah E, for the question. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for sharing your adventure. How long do you plan to be nomads? There really is no plan, but we don't really see any end in sight. Baron, are you playing any games right now from Bluno Flo Floriano? Yes, I have been playing World of Warcraft. It's interesting to play that on solar power, but now that we're home, I get to not worry about that. Let's Thank you guys. answer some of the most popular questions that we get, which is how long, uh, $2 from Wendy's. Are you guys Trump supporters? We're not, <laughs> not let's not talk about that. Not particularly, yeah. Um, how long do you think you're going to be living like this? It's and hard it's to say. Like, what, another this donation? Is, I, it's hard to know if we should keep answering Just questions. Just wanted to say hi from Bu Brooklyn. I'll have to watch this later. Thanks for sharing. Have a great day. Thanks holiday. so much, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Um, let's crank through, and then I'll leave it here, and then we can hit the donations next. Like, like let's do a, a question or okay. two. Okay, because I don't want to be an, uh, I'm annoying sorry, to Steve, you guys we'll watching. That. <laughs> okay, go for it. Next question. Marriage. What about it? Are we going to do that? That's what everybody's wanting to know. I don't know. Maybe at some point. We don't feel, or I don't feel like super, like it's necessary. Okay, kids. Kids, maybe. Maybe. All right, those are the top three questions. Maybe, and then if we had kids, would we move out of the scamp? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say on all of those things. Most memorable day, memorable day in the scamp so far. That's one I figured That's we'd have to think question, about. That's a good question, but yeah. I just the first one that comes to mind is when we got stuck in Breckenridge in the ice. Oh, yeah. And I had to ride the skateboard on the front tongue of the scamp to get it out. That, that was, was sketchy. That was really sketchy, yeah. What's another good one? Hardest part about living in the scamp? We kind of answered that, right? Just having to be dynamic. I think it can be hard way. when we haven't showered for a long time, especially if there's we're in an area where um, there's not laundromats close or a shower close, yeah. or the weather hasn't permitted us to shower outside. When we're both just sitting there, really uncomfortably unclean. It's mostly when it's hot outside. Yeah. But uh, then we can usually shower pretty easy outside. Nice pro tip. Uh, snow on the ground makes showering really easy because you could just use it as a loofah and it's exfoliating too which is great i was washing a dish yeah it's over really in the good latrine i would grab some and scrub and then throw it in the little hole wet wipes are great too somebody just said okay let's catch up on donations real quick christy randall just wanted to say hi from brooklyn we got that one thank you christy steve wyatt he haul merry christmas from San Juan White. Wayne Wright? Wayne Wright. Thanks, Steve Wyatt. Um, you do not have a unibrow. You are sexy AF. She must be speaking to you. Sorry, is this makes you uncomfortable, but had to set the record straight. Thank you, MJ. <laughs> Feels good, bro. Lexi, 1999. Thanks for being you. Thank you for being you, Lexi. That's all for now. Somebody just asked me, you do Wim Hof method in cold? I have, yeah. Um, that's kind of how I got into it. But since then, I don't really do 
the whole like hyperventilation mechanism as much, but it did teach me to get control of my breath and how to use that, which is really useful. But yeah, anytime I get in cold water, I normally take a few intentional breaths, and then when I'm sitting down, I try to breathe with a relaxed um, breath. What? Have you ever been concerned with scamp security or had any close calls? Um, it's something that I'm always thinking about whenever we leave this camp, but um, as far as close calls go, it's hard to know, but I don't think so. Um, what are you pointing at? Oh, I, sorry. I was, oh. like, pointing to scroll, not even pointing. Um, from Cass Larkin, 999. Thank you, Cass. Jennifer Masterson. I lost my husband three and a half years ago. We had dreams to live just like you guys. My heart is filled with peace knowing that you guys are able to keep up the fantastic videos. S'mores and staffs are the best. We agree. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, here's a really good question. Why a scamp over a van? Um, and we've evolved kind of in our thinking about that as we've Yeah. Uh, it, with the scamp or any trailer, it's nice that we can unhook it and leave it, and then we have the car to drive around in, and that way we keep our spot that we're camping in, too. Um, and if one of us wants to stay and the other one wants to go, then they can do that. The van would be nice, though, if we were moving a lot more often. But how we do it, we kind of settle down in an area for a while and then travel around in the car from there. When we were moving a lot this summer, the first time that we'd ever really moved more than every week, it was uh, that was the first time that I realized, oh, my gosh, I can totally understand a van now. Mm -hmm. And to be stealth camping if you were living closer to or in a city, that would make sense. We couldn't do it in a trailer. No. So There's nothing stealthy about this camp. It's obviously exactly our, what it is. For our purposes, I think it um, the trailer makes, makes so sense. much sense for Just because we're always out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. we were, yeah. Like working from the scamp. If we were camping in, like, cities and stuff more often, I think a, a van would be necessary. But... Loving the Geolanders? Yeah, we're loving the Geolanders. They're great tires. Matt's Rideshare. Hi, I newly found your channel and love it. It has made me want to do cross-country in my car next summer on my YouTube channel. Fabulous. Sweet. Do it, dude. Kareen Walters. Waters. Ten dollars. Ha ha ha. And a jelly bean rolling around <laughs> laughing. My Hectic World, four ninety nine. I hope I am not being intrusive, but do you guys plan on having kids? I guess we answered that terribly kind of, a minute ago, yeah. but... It's something that we think about a lot. I think before we have kids, there's just a lot of thought that needs to go into that. Like, I don't want to just do it because we want to do it. Like, I don't know. I think it's an important decision, and there's a lot of humans out here already. So we got to really have our heads on straight for that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I still feel like I'm really young. So yeah. if it were to happen, it wouldn't be anytime soon. Um, another one, five dollars, Tom Fisher. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who's donated. Really, really, we appreciate it so much. Um, how do you plan your next big move? Is it season based or preference? Uh, it's a number of things. A lot, of, most of it is proximity. So we try not to just travel really far from place to place without reason like if we're trying to get somewhere we normally try to pop in somewhere in between and find a way to a place to camp in between there um right now and in the winter a lot of it is climate based so how much snow we're going to get like what the weather patterns are like how cold it's getting um honestly like for comfort we would likely go camp somewhere with a little bit less snow but also it's pretty fascinating seeing people camping in a lot of snow. So we may go back and camp around the same area that we were just it's so we really can get some fun. more snow videos. Yeah, it's a blast. And there's a lot to learn and it's like, I don't know, it's fun. Something that does make it challenging though is moisture yeah. is not easy in this camp. We have to be really careful about that. Um, everything is drying out. We do have the camp in Oregon right now at our friends. It's in their garage drying out. So that is 
fantastic yeah. that we got to do that, but we need to always be on our moisture control. Linda Joko, 1999, are you out of your mind? Thank you, Thank Linda. you. Um, Shira, 499, another bullet journal video, please. You are the best. Merry Christmas. Elsa's bullet journal is fascinating. Well, thank you. Every time you pull it out, it's like it's so much to learn. I'm doing a, it's this thing, um, year, yearcompass.com. It's my third year doing it. It's free. You, uh, it's basically just a bunch of prompts. You can, uh, it asks you questions. What was your greatest success? Um, biggest failure, people who influenced you the most in your past year. And then your year ahead. What are you looking forward to? What are your big ideas? Things like that. Um, it's really interesting looking at my past years and seeing what I wanted for the next year and crisscrossing, you know. So that I've been working on that in my bullet journal. So I would like to make a video of that if that makes sense. Um, and E button, ten dollars. Merry Christmas and keep the little Enu in toys. He doesn't like toys. <laughs> he only really plays with toys when somebody else. When his grandma, my mother, is around. <laughs> or when they're another <laughs> or dog's Or when there's toy. another dog. Somebody said, have we gotten any new tech gear lately? Your mouth, or your, uh, the mic, the MV88, Sure MV88. It's been incredible. Um, it has an app that goes with it, so you plug it into the lightning port in your phone. And then you can dial the um, sound profile of the app like on your phone and then you can switch to any camera app and it'll use those preferences. It's excellent. Bobby S, two dollars, thank you. Why do you take the Cubic Mini out when you move? Mm, it's heavy. And, and it's right in the front on the tongue of the scamp. Yeah. We could leave it in, but it's also now that we have all that wood in the scamp. Um, and it's up so high. It's really heavy on that side. Yeah. Yeah, and when it bonks around, when we're driving with it not attached, it is bonking around. So it's kind of like the fiberglass is so light that, I don't know, I'd be just afraid. Yeah. In a better, bigger, more solid structure, like if you did a van build or something, really built it in. I don't, I don't know. Why. I'm sure it would be fine, but I think just taking it down and having it lower um, so it doesn't jack up the center of gravity is a good thing. Good question. Two ninety nine for my hectic world. Thanks for answering. Love your inspiring channel. Thank, Thank you. you. We don't have a preferred turmeric supplement brand that I know. Of. We normally just try to get something relatively clean that's on sale. And by relatively clean, I think I just look for um, brands that we know are good. Uh, but still, I don't know if you ever really know what you're getting. I don't. I try my best though. Um, how about, we did answer that. Whenever I look at my phone, I'm trying to keep up with you guys, so, sorry. Any tips to decrease the amount of trash that we make? Um, get a smaller trash can. That's pretty funny, but that's real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, since we have such a small trash can, that really helps. It starts with things that we purchase. And yeah, that's true. I never really did, I think, about it before the stamp, but we have to be very aware of what kind of packaging we're getting because we're going to have to let that, we'll have to store that in the scamp until we're able to take our trash somewhere. And um, even the recycling, we try to not have like a load of it too. So if there's something that comes in, there's a lot of foods that I want, but it comes in a big plastic box. And what are we going to do with a big plastic box so we don't buy that food? And that's a really good way, like that's where... So we really like bulk places. So if you get a bunch of jars and take those into the grocery store and fill those up with bulk things, that reduces quite a lot. Does Elsa play World of Warcraft? Question mark. No. It's kind of a bummer, but it's okay. I tried once, and I really enjoyed it until until you made me. We went into the battlegrounds, and it was a little bit extreme for Elsa. Any tips on traveling in small corridors with a significant other? Uh, be patient, and if you get in an argument, don't try to win the argument. Just try to come to a resolution together. For the horde, now I play alliance side. I'm playing a female uh, uh, night elf hunter right now. Okay. Baron should have a channel to geek out on gear. I might do that eventually. 
$25 from Terry Crest. Thank you. I am thirsty. It's water. Little Miss Tasty Cakes, $1.99. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Chris Young. I just adore you two and your story and such a beautiful life. Thank you for sharing such amazing places. Do you plan to scamp it out long term? As long as we can forecast, yeah. I can't think of what else we would do, really, for now. Um, I second another bullet journal video. Um, I do too. Thank you. I appreciate that people like to see that. That's like your favorite thing to make. This is a lemon vodka water. I just chugged water water. Um, Baron's mom made this. She makes them real good. Real good. What other questions? We want to okay, more? let's do these questions. Yeah. Do you miss the makeup world? I think that's a good question. No, no, not at all. I really Why? enjoy body painting. I, I thought that was a really fun way to express myself. I never thought of myself as an artist until doing that. But um, the makeup world of YouTube, I think I just really prefer where we, this area of YouTube that we're at. Um, it kind of feels like we're helping a lot of people and uh, it feels really fulfilling. People in the makeup industry, like, it has a lot of, like, fighting, it seems. Like, a lot of bitterness. I don't know. The, well, and it, you, with the industry that it is, like, literally surface level, it's makeup, like, it's on the top surface yeah. level. And I think for a lot of the people in that industry that's what a lot of the i mean it's entertaining to watch all the drama and stuff right so um i don't know i don't miss it but i don't think there's anything wrong with it i watch a lot of beauty gurus like um, oh nathan lorenz what's up nate from nathan schmidt one of my nathan. best buddies from all times um Read the Woods book on your recommendation. Brilliant. Is that Into the Woods or what's the... From That was from Oscar. Thank you, Oscar. And then four ninety nine from Days Divinity. Keep it up. We will keep it up. Um, what do you recommend bringing on the road for two weeks in your car trip? I plan on sleeping in my car. From oh, Matt's ride chair. Question. Um, two weeks. A little stove mm -hmm. so that you can make um, hot water on your own and hot water for food or for coffee. I think any type of coffee, <laughs> if you drink coffee. Yeah. What other tools? In this season, a little f collapsible shovel might be. A uh, um, electric blanket so you can run your car and kick that on for a minute and keep it under your sleeping bag or whatever. That might be a nice thing to have. Uh, if you're going like, backcountry stuff, my aunt just got us some, um, um, it's kind of like, they're like fold out rubber mats that you put under your tires. They're made by Goodyear. They're like anti-stick mats. Um, maybe something like that would be helpful too, just in case you get stuck. Um, $5 from Shelby, thank you. Terry Holland, four ninety nine. Hey, I figured this out. Have you guys ever tried Epic Waves for showering? They are really huge and cool. No. Uh uh. We will have to check them out. Sonia Bernard Bernardino, twenty dollars. Thank you. In loving memory of my son, and with gratitude for the peace you bring to my life. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank that you means so a lot. Uh, Barbara White, twelve dollars. Um. Check out Alfie Aesthetic. Thank you, Barbara. Richard D. Cannon, $100. You guys rock. Love all of it, especially the cooking. Keep up the awesome lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, here's a question. How old are you guys? That's a good basic one. I'm 31. And I'm 28. Um, tips for a young person when transitioning into the off-grid life. So maybe like That's a college a student. Um... Figure out how to eat things that power your body 
that aren't super expensive and are mildly nutritious. Like I would think, honestly, I would go um, lots of fats, lots of nuts, lots of um, nut butters and that kind of stuff. Um, maybe get a greens powder, invest in a greens powder, something like that, just so you can start eating clean and having like good um, clean energy and uh, be able to power your body without having to pay tons of money. That's a good place to start that I think is like not a place to start that most people think yeah. of. Nutrition is really important. It's fundamental. And figuring out like frugal nutrition is um, probably a good, that's where I would start. I wonder how, how exactly do you start frugal nutrition? Um, Cause I mean, nuts are expensive. Yeah, they can be. You can buy them. Greens in bulk, powder though. is expensive. It's expensive, but at the same time, it's like you buy it once and you have it. You're investing in the whole month, you know. And you can get a lot of nutrition in for like thirty bucks or whatever a greens powder. And if you are instead eating all of your food, making it all, eating apples and peanut butter instead of going and buying McDonald's cheese right. cheeseburgers and stuff, then in that regard, you could do it in a frugal way. Totally. Um. If you could park one place forever, where would it be? Hmm. That's tough. That's a good question, though. It totally depends on season. Where's our favorite campsite that we've ever had? I think Utah. Little town in that Utah. That was cool, yeah. I think the Arkansas but Valley. But to park forever there? Arkansas oh. Valley. Yeah. Different... Our favorite areas. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you where. Uh, which one What's of you... What's your cheap food? Pizza. My favorite cheap food is probably Cheese chips. of any kind. I like the, like, boulder chips. The kettle fried or whatever they're My called. gosh, you could eat chips all day long. Yeah, Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, and dinner. And while you sleep. And you're out of town, I do. <laughs> Pop Vulture Inc. Two dollars. Which one of you gets more frustrated with scamp life? I guess probably me. I guess it depends too because it's not like directly scamp life that yeah. you're generally frustrated with, though. I think you just feel a lot of pressure from YouTube and everything. Yeah, you know? it is strange because we have this, and there's a question here that somebody asked that's really interesting how do you stay motivated not to be um like lay around all day because we have a lot of time with this lifestyle which like by design we have a lot of time we're not working to fund a house we do make enough to save money and we do save money mm -hmm. but we have extra time and that time usually goes toward doing whatever we want uh in a lot of cases, creating and like bettering our crafts in whatever ways we want, whatever areas we want. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like, oh wow, everybody's at their nine to five. I need to be really on it, like all day long. I need to be responding to emails. I need to be ready to be um, speaking to people and producing and producing and producing so that can get s stressful. And when I don't, um, it actually ends up being. Like when I let my psyche kind of chill and then I get back into it, I can always make better stuff of anything that I'm making. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's counterintuitive, but if you give your subconscious a chance to like chew on things, when you're focused on something else, then when you come back to the problem, you always do a better job at it. And you're like more revitalized. Rocky to get you Mountain guys to Mike, Zion. 9.99, are you out of your mind to get you guys to Zion, broken record. It's kind of on our unofficial winter yeah. plans. I would like to go to Northern California and see the redwoods and sequoias and stuff. I just feel like that would be a really neat thing to do. Mander Jack, five dollars. Um, send me an email about the mate you lost an earring to. I haven't yet ever done custom earrings. I haven't ever offered that or custom jewelry. I think that could be cool. I just don't know. I always make them sporadically, so I haven't really offered that. But send me an email. Um, Savvy Clayton, two dollars. How was transitioning from MU to Nomad? MU. I don't know what MU is. Modern Unity. One second. 
Uh, I'm assuming that that's like regular life, right? I don't know. What were the hardest parts of your of transitioning over? Can you think of anything? Um, what are you doing? I was scrolling to. There was like a, a um, somebody spamming stuff. Oh. Uh, what was the question? How was transitioning from something to being a nomad? Probably. I mean, it it took time. I don't know where. Yeah, but when we did it, we um, we stayed in our friend's backyard in the camp for a month and a half or so, right? Two yeah, months. Yeah, two months. And then, so that like gave us a feel for what it was going to be like without really jumping in. And then from there, we've just been doing it ever since. From Days Divinity four ninety nine, happy holidays! You guys are bad. Thanks for getting me hip to cacao. Woohoo! Cacao is amazing. Kim Gamble five dollars. Thanks, Kim. Charlotte. Um, four ninety nine. Thank you. Your videos have helped me so much with my anxiety. Elsa, your cinematography is beautiful. What crafts would you like to try next? Oh. <sighs> okay. Because we got got junk into junk journaling. I made these love letter kits. I'm. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to be putting on Instagram my love letter kit that I made recently. So got junk journaling out of the way. Beaded earrings and bracelets Heck. now. Yeah, that's fun. I'm not done with that. Um. I, I like that be, craft because it's small. Yeah. I want to be a metalsmith. That's been a goal of mine for years. Uh, we just do not have the space, but one day soon. Kimberly, $40. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. Aww. Will you be at RTR, another meetup in the Pacific Northwest area? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily RTR, no. But not another RTR. meetup. Um if, if something's going on, keep us in the loop because we normally miss those. But probably not RTR just because it's so far south. And where it is held is kind of, it doesn't lend itself to the way that we like to camp because we like our solitude. And it's hard to find that in the wide open desert. Right? Yes. And it's hard to find a place to pee. Yes. Because there's people <laughs> everywhere and it's just like you can't hide behind a cactus. Um... Luz, 199 So, Baron, when are you going to propose? I'm not sure. I think, honestly, I want to propose to you. <laughs> <laughs> so. 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 Maybe. Maybe we might have a party at 10 years. My sister really wants to plan it. I don't know. It just seems like there's oh, a lot Finray. to that. Finray, 990, 90, 99, 99. <laughs> Double out of your mind. Thank you. Fin Hi, y'all. always in the chat. Happy holidays. Saying nice things. I, w I hope we're saying her name right. I think. Finra. I think. Finra. Finra. Are there any other questions? Yes, we have a lot. Do you of either have a college degree? Do you have a college degree? I have a college degree from the University of Kansas. Film and Media Studies. A business minor. And I didn't finish mine. Do I studied you? computer and information systems for a while and entrepreneurship for a while. And then I realized that the internet has everything that I was learning, so. So second, part two of that question is, is it worth it to have a college degree? <sighs> I don't want to dissuade case. anybody, but I, I, think, I think you should start trying to learn everything that you can on the internet. Find the motivation from yourself, and if you even need to, set aside even like ha a quarter of the money that you would pay for your semester's tuition and pay yourself that money you know like give yourself motivation to learn because i think at the end of the day the majority of what you're buying for it, or the majority of what you're buying is motivation to learn so if you can motivate yourself to learn and just do it online push yourself to whatever extent you can and then move to paying somebody if you um if you need to but i think everything can actually be learned yourself or online and a lot of people switch while they're in college switch what they want to be learning so if you were following some sort of online course like lynda.com i think i used yeah. for a lot of video editing but now skillshare and there's a lot and of team other. treehouse and if you're going to college primarily to learn how to make money um i would i think the best way to do that is like code camps um and anybody can learn to code and anybody can learn to 
uh, leverage the a computer and the internet as a tool to make money. So I think code camps make a lot of sense because you can knock that out in a few weeks and um, yeah, it's a good way to make money out of school or without school. I think having, um, I learned a lot about work experience in my field, having a college, yeah. not even, it's not about the degree, but being in college, I got a lot of work experience. Yeah, and your internships, that's one thing, if you do go to college, get a lot of internships. But you know what, like they do in, is it Europe? They go out, instead of going straight to college, they go into college then they go into university, but college, I think, based on what my friend Lolly says, that's when you go and do your internship for a year. That's cool. Yeah. That puts you directly in the field before you then pay a ton of money to go into college. If you could get an internship somewhere right out of high school in the field you think you want to go into, even if it's unpaid, um, yeah. that would be a really cool thing to do. Uh, from Elizabeth. 1999, are you out of your mind? Just want to thank you guys for making such beautiful and inspiring content. Thank you. Um, Delilah, 1499. Elsa, I love your videos. They're beautifully edited. I can get lost in your world through your videos and forget all about my hectic life. God bless you both. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Okay, let's ask a question here that you can answer while I scroll. Okay. Has living in the scamp helped with finances or cost in more, cost more or cost more in different ways? Um, it's a good I, question. We were like we really premeditated all this. So you had your YouTube channel going. I had a number of web development clients going, and we had like everything figured out to transition to living on the road. And then from there, it was like trying to be as frugal as possible and minimize expenses. So our like. It has helped us, like, more than I could imagine even financially, but that's because we, like, primed all of our things to roll into that and just gain momentum, you know? So that's not to say that if anybody goes and tries to live how we're living that you will have, um, like, financial success, but I think if you prime it... Um, right and leverage what you're doing and like share it and those types of things and um try to intentionally learn all that you can and share the things that you're learning then i think you can do that but uh, that's not to say that just moving into a scamp you're gonna like all your financial woes are gonna be deleted because car repairs and those types of things are definitely a thing mm -hmm. gas car repairs and in our case we spend the most money on healthy food yeah but that's by that's design. my choice. And that's, that way we don't have to spend as much on healthcare and stuff because we don't get sick and we're pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. We don't get hurt as often, knock on wood. But. Um, a lot of people want to know how we make money. And we make money in a lot of different areas. on um, Through YouTube AdSense, through uh, all of your really kind donations, sticker sales, stickers uh, we have in REI, Bass Pro Shops, and I just saw in Shields, which is cool, and various different other shops around the United States. Um, web development work, yeah. contracted video work, contracted digital design work. What else? We have a lot of like different areas, but most of it is YouTube. And like the podcast and those things we don't directly make money on, but it's one of those things that eventually, once it gains momentum and stuff, that's and one of the things that we're like priming for the future. Those things bring people to different, er right. like having a YouTube audience then when I make things and I sell it online, um, all those different areas, right. avenues bring people into whatever we're trying to do or promote or sell. So whatever hats or crafts or clothing that you get into, you can then show that and sell that to all the people that want swag and we got, it. yeah. Should we talk about the brand deal? Which? We don't do a lot of p paid brand Not deals. I don't think no, any, but... um, I don't know if we get paid from companies really. We get paid in product a lot. Not even a lot. 
honestly, BioLite is the primary company that mm -hmm. we enjoy working with because we just love their products and what they stand for and stuff. But we... And they've paid us for, like... Various know, projects. Very little, though, for, you know? Yeah. We like, just, we like We just like, light. we like that we can reach out to them and be like, hey, we love the new thing that you made, so can we have one of those? <laughs> um, but we turn down a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. Just because it muddies the reality of what we're doing and it's kind of, yeah, we have reached out a little bit to Goal Zero. They'd be a, another company that we'd like to work with. I think they seem to work with mostly really like athletes badass, and stuff. Ad, kind of like um, Red Bull. Yeah. We're not quite on that level, yeah, but hopefully. We need to get a little more soon. Let's do some donations really quick. Okay. And then there's still so many more okay. donations. Cool. Let's cream through the donations. Okay. Okay. KG499, thank you all for showing a beautiful lifestyle with the ups and downs. I'm working toward it, but I'm stuck on how to choose a place to move. Happy holidays. That's an interesting thing to talk about. Like showing more of the like dramatic stuff that we do because we don't normally film or show any of that but like they're not dramatic but like real life when things suck you know when it gets like rough and we're like like when i'm frustrated with something when i've made a lot of messes yeah we well not even that's not that interesting but okay. like when well, i i cussed a number of times when we were trying to get out of the snow and stuff and i don't know that normally we would show a lot of swearing in the yeah. videos, but we did because it felt like it was kind of it's more dampening real. the video yeah. by taking it out. But I need to like watch myself and not cuss because people have young kids watching and stuff. But in that moment, it's like I don't care what YouTube thinks right now. Like, you know. But generally, just kind of showing the, right. the realistic sides, and I think we do do that a lot. Uh, we don't have a lot of dramatic scenarios that we go through. Not really. But it's but yeah. like showing the hard stuff. But then at the same time, like I want to take you, like take the camera when I'm going to dig a poop hole. You know, I'm like okay, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, there is a balance. Yeah. Of entertainment versus reality. I I do think that we have a, a good balance. Yeah. I, I hope like other people think so. think so too. Savvy Clayton, two dollars. We do an edited Q&A, and MUA is makeup artist. Oh, you said MUA. I just saw MU. Um, yes, this was going to be an edited Q&A, but it kind of, people like live streams, and it's kind of an easy way to um, Like, we can get content out fast, and, like, since we're doing all the holiday stuff, it's not as much uh work in the on the front end to get it up i have a video a family video that i haven't been posting i've been kind of afraid that it will i don't know people won't want to see it but it's my family came out to portland and it's everything we did with them just vlog fun montage that i would like to upload on christmas just because holiday family i don't know we don't want to ruin the vibe though right i want to, if there's a lot of new people here so i I know you're here for scamp stuff, so I'm afraid that if I put non-scamp stuff, then people will not enjoy it. That's another, that, yeah, there's a... We could talk about that. That's interesting, too, I think. Like, ha having the latest video go relatively viral, the Blizzard video. Yeah, that it went up past a million views in three days. Now we're at 1.3 or 1.5 million yeah. or something. So it's interesting, like when new people come along that don't really understand us or what we're doing, they have there's a lot of confusion, a lot of negativity, oftentimes. Um, so it's like part of it is almost it's almost not like worth it. We want to grow slow and introduce people to our content like slowly, so that people kind of know who we are and what we're about and. Um, are kind of like on our team and wanting to figure things out with us, you know? But um, when things go viral, it just brings in a lot of attention. It's kind of hard to deal with, honestly. But we're doing it. When is the cookbook something? Um, 199, when is the cookbook coming out from the UK? Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. I don't know, maybe in the spring. Yeah. Well, how many, how many items... Do we need to have in a cookbook for it to be worthy of making a cookbook out of? 
because we don't even cook like more than 10 things. Well, honestly, I think it would be more about cooking with... Somebody said 20, 15, 3, 20... Without the appliances. Yeah, we don't have Miss Mary Lou, our fabulous moderator here today. Yeah, so sorry, fam. 15 to 20. See, 25, that's more things than we cook. We'd have to make stuff up. Oh, I see. What you know what I mean? I thought people were just saying numbers. Um, 20, 10. I was thinking like 5 to 7 for 5-ish breakfast, 5-ish lunch, 5-ish dinner, some snacks, some desserts. But I think what's interesting is that we're cooking without common appliances. So it would be a good camping cookbook. It would be a good minimalist cookbook for people who don't have a lot of things. I think it would be things. more like ingredients and strategies than like specific recipes. Yeah, tips. Like you, if you're living in a tiny place, use a shallot for one meal instead of cutting half an onion and saving half of the onion somewhere. Because save storing half an onion in the cooler they makes smell everything horrible. stinky. So just use one shallot. It'll be different things, tips and tricks like that that we've gathered by um, having to kind of be resourceful. I think that would be a... F I would like to read that myself. Yes, I would do. Okay. Uh, hope I didn't miss anybody here. Tammy Sturgis, 999. Thanks for being who you are. You two are such an inspiration. I absolutely love, love your life. If I had to do it all over again, I would choose this. Keep on keeping on. Merry Christmas. Thank you. That's awesome. $20. Thank you guys for sharing from JW. All your hard-earned lessons. See you at Van Stock, Alaska oh, 2020. That's a thing. We have a podcast coming up on that specifically. Van Stock, uh, Alaska. Mm -hmm. I think it's vanstock.org is the website. If anybody is going to be in Alaska and wants to go to a van meetup through our friend Practical Paradise Lindsay. Hitchhiking Multi Poo, twenty four ninety nine. Merry Christmas, Chloe and I are simply paying it forward. Thank you so much. You can pull your Merry feet Christmas. Out so not like... Oh. What else? Anything else? A oh few more. Goodness. Christy Randall, thank you, Christy. What do you? What do your parents think of the way you live? I'm back. I had to call my dad. LOL. <laughs> Our parents like it. Well, like, because we've proven it out. Your parents are, all. both of our parents are stoked. Mm -hmm. Your parents are great. I think they would likely do it maybe themselves. themselves. Yeah. I think my parents are happy that we have figured this out. Um, my mom would like to get a camper. I don't think she would do it the way that we do. But um, but I think both our parents are really proud. Yeah. And these necklaces, uh, my friend... Kerr Craft Metal Magic. She made these, and both of our moms have one, thanks to her. And they love them. They wear them all the time. Julie Harper, $20. What sort of things should I look for when buying a used scamp? Mm. That's a good question. No cracks in the fiberglass. Yeah. Unless you know how to fix fiberglass. And fiberglass isn't, like, impossible to work with. It's just kind of gross, and um, you got to work quick. The floor damage. Yeah. Look for soft, rotted wood in all areas of the floor. Especially like behind where the bed is or the what folds up into a table. Like up along the wall, peel that carpet back and see if there's any wood rot like under the bed and then in both of the storage compartments in the very back. That's where ours showed a little bit of water damage. And then in the front storage compartments, because the whole bottom the whole um, floorboard of the scamp is uh, like particle board that's treated. It's I can't remember the acronym that they use, but uh, if any water gets to that, it rots out over time. So uh, that's another what they're... major thing is um, if the if the the internal um, cabinetry has been removed, it's probably unless they know exactly what they're doing, probably not a good option if you're buying a completely empty scamp because the the cabinets inside with the support beams, they hold the integrity of the whole scamp. So if one of them is missing, the fiberglass might be warped. And that's something to not get into unless you really know what you're doing. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Four ninety nine dollars from Randy Beckett. Happy holidays from Indianapolis. Been enjoying your channel and content for almost three years. Have a great new year. Thanks. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us, Randy. Oh, we're behind. 
I appreciate all of you guys who are here commenting. And There's once, so many people. Once we get through all this and answer a few more questions, then we'll be more like talkative of general chat, but it's hard to keep up. Yeah, maybe we'll go from these last donations and go here. And okay. then while we go here, I'll do the throw in some questions too. Four ninety nine from TN. Really love your videos and your cooking. Have a very happy holiday. Thank you. It's so funny that you're a cook now. Who? You. Oh. Because before I we know. lived in the scamp, <laughs> I didn't know how. You never cooked anything. I think it's just interesting to people because, like I said, we have to cook in a unique way. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully, and I think it's fun the way that I show it and edit it. Oh, I love ASMR cooking videos, so that's part of why I I like to film them myself. I make videos the kinds that I I like to watch. Ten dollars from Misty. Just found you guys last week and love you guys and your gorgeous videos. I ordered a cubic mini grizzly after seeing your mini. How often do awesome. you need to clean clean your chimney? Yeah, that's great. That's a great question. Um, that we w almost wish that we would have gotten the grizzly because it's a little bit bigger. You could burn bigger wood. Um, something I would suggest out of this gate and something that I wish we would have listened to people suggesting is uh, use compressed logs. They're super handy. They're pretty cheap and they burn forever and they burn really clean and really hot so then you won't get much creosote in your chimney. Uh, when we were burning just stand like pine that we chopped up off the ground and didn't dry out or anything, we would build up a good bit of creosote over the course of a week or two, it would be thick enough to where I would want to clean it out. Um, but we have a lot of stove pipe outside of the scamp. So what's happening is the stove pipe gets cold because it's exposed and the air cools down. And once the air cools down, then it coagulates on the stove pipe. So if you have less stove pipe exposed, that would help you to not build, make as much crease so because the air stays hot the whole way through. Um, great answer. Thanks. Chrissy, 1999. I lost my hubby four months ago, only been married to him five years, and it took 40 years to find him. Your videos helped me escape and heal. You have hooked me on cacao. Please, what is the frother you use? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Yeah. Um, the frother is just an Amazon frother. I think we have it in a... Ugh. There's... It's I need linked to put it somewhere. In, I need to put I, it in more videos. And it's in one of the... We have a podcast, if you didn't know, but it's linked in the show notes of the podcast, too. It's just an Amazon frother. The, they have a USB rechargeable one. And that would be better. Yeah. Than batteries. Michael, 499. Make some new okay. nerd out videos. Baron, love your guys' channel. Thank you so much for sharing so, these videos with us. So... I have a script that I've been working on that is a nomad nerding script. So all the video games and playing games on the road and how to do that and the different games that um, work for nomad life and those types of things. And we'll probably end up turning it into a podcast first. But um, yeah. It's pretty so interesting how you can that. play the way that you do yeah. in the scamp. It's fascinating. Um, Lil Miss Tasty Cakes, five dollars. <laughs> My husband and I absolutely love your videos and inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Tasty Cakes. How many hours of sleep do you get in this camp? Who's a bed hog? You are. Whatever. Our camp is. Camp is a bed hog. You are violent if you don't have enough space. Elsa swings. Okay, what do you do though? I sleep on the corner, the, mm -hmm. the edge of the bed, it's kind of like this. This is the outside, like the wall, it's rounded. So I have the short side, he has this side. Yeah. He always ends up rolling on top of me and I Not am on stuck on the wall. When I sleep here on the rare occasion that he allows me to do that. When you sleep, I'm like a foot taller than you. But I'm very conscious to keep my face usually out and give him plenty of space. It's mm. really probably very comfortable for you. Yeah, it's great for me. Um, sleeping in this camp is really difficult for Elsa and I pity her. <laughs> how, much, how many hours of sleep do you get? Uh, I do my best if I get 10 hours. I don't think you usually do sleep 10 hours, but... No, it depends on what I'm doing. Like honestly, being back in Kansas City and we've been like drinking with people and stuff and I feel like I need to sleep a lot more if I'm doing that. Yeah. But generally speaking, 
eight hours, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think a solid, easy eight hours. And usually Baron goes to sleep later and wakes up later and I go to sleep earlier and wake up earlier. It's mm -hmm. kind of a nice way for us both to have solo time um, in the scamp. And also I think it just feels natural. I just like to be up in the morning. You mm -hmm. like to be up late. I like to be up in the mornings when it's like I can be outside. Yeah, and when it's warmer. But I'm more of a night owl. Like I always hit my stride late at night. That's my my solo time. Twenty four ninety nine. Thank you. From be cool. Be oco. Merry Christmas, camp. Camp deserves to see you too. <laughs> we need to make a day in the life of camp, and yes. I can voice him over. I think that. We yes. have. Steve, I am playing Classic WoW on server Chrome Crush on the Alliance, and server transfers are up. So if anybody wants to come play on Chrome Crush, my name is QZ, and come play. Okay, that's, that's just a little plug is all. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, upload Ex videos of your life with family. It shows different... Okay. Yeah, we should. We should get my parents down here. Mom and Dad, I know you're watching this. They haven't come even here. said anything. But come come down on. Here. My mom will be talking to my dad. Oh, bud, come on. <laughs> we can just go say hi real quick. <laughs> oh, my God. The voiceover on camp was hilarious. Where's camp? He's at my parents' house. Um, Baron's parents are showing their house. They're trying to sell it. Um, so we so need, camp's not here. We need no dog hair here. Yeah. We cannot have that. They ate him. We did not eat camp. He probably tasted pretty good. Um, we left this camp in Oregon at some of our new friend's house in their garage, which is really, really, really sweet of them. Thank you, guys. We love you. Here's a good one. Okay. What are important skills you need or use often? Patience. Good one, for sure. I don't know. And I think patience is a skill. I think within the scamp and also outside of the scamp. Yeah. Like as we're back here, um, seeing family and friends, especially people who don't, it's not so much anymore, but yeah. even having patience of people who don't really get it, um, knowing that it, I don't know, it's great and working for us, but also patience within the scamp more than anything. Well, yeah. not even so much anymore. It's like been yeah. such an evolution. But just general patience. Um, and I think meditation is a really useful skill because it teaches patience and it teaches uh, like how to uh, internalize different things and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> what other skills? I don't know. The general, like, how to live in the backcountry and stuff. You have had a lot of camping experience before yeah. we started this, and that's been huge help. Yeah. Different things like um, building fires, very most basic yeah. thing, which I've, I've gotten good at now yeah. after some time. But Elsa had never been camping ever until she met me. So you don't have to be an expert camper to pull this off. But just uh, get with one. Get with somebody who is. <laughs> <laughs> and now the internet is bang, so yeah. you can go online and learn what you need right. to learn. Chris Hooker, two dollars. Hey. Hey, Baron. Hope to meet up on the road. Hey, sometime. I used to play paintball with Chris. He's, dude. Okay, so when you play paintball, you have somebody, like the guys that play in the back of the field are the ones that lane. So as you go off the break, like everybody um, leaves the box at the same time and breaks off to their positions. And Hooker played the back position. So he would shoot a lane, like where people would generally run. And he was one of the only people that would shoot me regularly off the break. Only people I've ever played with in paintball ever. He was a beast. Dang, yeah. Chris. Yeah. He's crazy strong. Do you ever think you'll go back to living in a traditional house? No, but I would like to play paintball again. Oh, right. About it. <laughs> no, I, not a traditional like house in a subdivision, probably. But we would likely... Um, Can I have a sip of that? We will likely build some kind of house. 
eventually. This on my shirt is Thou Mayest. It's a coffee shop in Kansas City that some of my buddies own there. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know that we'll ever live in a traditional house. I, I think we'll always live in a really small and like most people's standard house. I would like to have large land, mm -hmm. a lot of land to do a lot of fun things on. Um, Mama Link, we're getting low. You're going to have to come down here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a good one. This is in yearcompass.com. Um, from Dakota, what's your biggest regret this year? And then part two, what's your biggest success? Oh, it's lagging. Oh, no. Are we okay? We're lagging? Are we back? Did we go away? Are we still here, everyone? Hello? Nobody's freaking out. You're, You're fine. fine. Okay. No lag. No lag. Yes, okay. okay. Cool. What was your biggest regret? I don't know that I have any regrets. I don't like generally have regrets. Generally I think speaking. I, um, oh, I hear her. Is she going to come? Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think changing the scamp. I wish that we hadn't had the scamp worked on. In the um, way that we did. It was just kind of rough. And we, of course yeah. we learned so many things from it that made it in ways worth it, but that would be my biggest regret. That's what I'm going to write in my bullet journal. Yeah. Biggest success. Getting the podcast going was a cool thing for me. And YouTube, like just to have this still going and to have built such an awesome community that we can always like ping for everything and people still like what we're doing and we still love what we're doing and we're just figuring everything out. Um, that's cool. It was pretty successful um, surviving our biggest winter storm. Yeah. It wasn't as much surviving as it looked like, though. And it, we didn't dramatize anything. But, like, we were fine. And in our experience, we truly haven't had that much snow ever. There were a lot of people who said, this is nothing. Yeah. Which is kind of funny, because I feel like two feet of snow in, like... Just over 24 hours is kind of a lot of snow anywhere. I hear more booze coming. Somebody <laughs> says. Mama Link is in the kitchen. <laughs> Any urges to buy a brand new scamp? Not really. Not unless we worked with them and like got everything um, worked out how we want it. Because when they sell them new, they come with all kinds of like refrigerator, furnace all different things and that's not uh i don't know we don't need any of that stuff we missed a ten dollars from daniel number one fan thanks oh, man thanks dude i think a new scamp it would be nice to know that all the everything was like the floor was all um Solid. new and the frame was all yeah secure but, but honestly i'd like take to, everything out and to have the headroom would be cool yeah so that i could yeah. stand up but honestly, if I were to ever, I would like to take an old scamp and redo it and take the floor out so that it's not that ODB plywood and replace the flooring with like a composite, something that doesn't rot over time um, and like some sort of insulation in it too. But would you buy a bigger scamp? Not right now. Thank oh, you. We got a drink. Do you want to at least wave at the camera? No. Nope. She did, but on the other side. I <laughs> can't see her. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Because there's so many things about having a bigger scamp that wouldn't be preferable to having a smaller scamp. Like, moving it around by hand is a huge one. That's. Um, I know that that sounds kind of ridiculous, hand. but uh, it's really helpful so that we can get exactly where we want to be. Seeing myself on a different angle. Okay, this should help us to go through comments a little easier. Okay, cool. Somebody said kids, question mark. Just, 
I'm sorry, we just broke the glass. And my phone fell and dropped on it. Good thing the new phone is waterproof. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you don't care. Is it, is, is it not wet anymore? Well, this is the new phone and it's water resistant. Yeah, that's what I care about, the phone. <laughs> No. Sorry, don't make me another one. We shouldn't have another. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh gosh. She said, is this all on camera? Okay, sorry, intermission. <laughs> okay, we need our moderator. No, I think it's just the live internet. T. Havdi, $10. Thank you so much. Mama Link is sure. Baron's mother, who's a rock star. She just made us the strength that then the phone shattered. <laughs> I almost brought our little phone tripod, but. Um, you should wipe the drink off of your phone, maybe. Um, just a minute. Yes. Yeah. How's that? How are we looking? Did you guys hear the phone splash into the drink? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> no problems here. Okay, that was pretty funny. Are there any other questions that we had? Um, we don't know if we're going to have kids. Somebody keeps asking that. We don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Would you consider leaving the scamp life? If we bought land, but we, even if we bought land, we would still live in the scamp for a good bit of time, I think. Um. $4.99, moving into our seven foot RV, 17 foot RV soon. You guys are a huge inspiration. Love your videos, and I think we've watched them all more than once. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was funny, Baron's parents didn't watch our, um, the video going kind of crazy, the, our winter camping video. They waited to watch it until we were here because they knew we were coming back. So that was fun. So by the time they watched it, we had over a million views on it. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Um, what other YouTube videos or YouTubers do we watch? Sailing the Vagabond. We just love. I can't wait to see their videos taking Greta overseas. Yeah. Um, I watch watch a lot of different channels. Um, one of my favorites of all time is Cold Fusion. Um, another one is The School of Life. I haven't watched them in a while. but I haven't either. And Curzon Ghost in a Nutshell. Another good video or another good channel. MKBHD is one of our favorites. Yeah. Um, Ted Miller, 1990. Oh, new one. <laughs> thank you. I'll keep this one just on the side. Okay, thank you. You sacrificed one glass, but we got another one. <laughs> Liz, I'm going to take a little drink. Number one fan. <laughs> Liza, nine ninety nine. Thank you, Barbara, two ninety nine. Thank you, and Ted Miller, nineteen ninety nine. Thank you, everyone. Um. Here you go. What do you do if you're sick and away from civilization? That's a good question. We're not normally like hours away from civilization, like generally an hour tops. So it's not like we're just stranded and, 
But we don't get sick super often either. Um, when we do get sick, it's usually when we go back home. Mm -hmm. Only because when we're in the scamp, or I mean, we're in kind of tiny towns. We're never in like huge groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, but flying on airplanes to get back to where we're going usually that makes me sick. I went, I got sick in Guatemala drinking the water. But in the scamp, it's kind of the same germs that we always have. <laughs> <laughs> that our bodies are used to. <laughs> would you consider going zero waste? Ideally, that would be awesome. Yeah. We would just have to buy a lot in bulk. And the thing is, as much as we want to, we are kind of constrained living in the scamp because we can't um, have a bunch of storage of bulk food items. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that it would be if we had some land and a spot, we could then have Camp canned things. stuff and we could make our own breads. We could make a lot of the foods that we have to buy now. Um, would you ever choose something rather than a Subaru? Hello, the Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> Saving for it as we speak. Uh, honestly, though, as far as a uh, car that's affordable um, and how I will drive can tow as much as we need to tow uh, and it's like capable ground clearance wise and stuff, there's not a lot that competes. Maybe different Toyotas and stuff I would look into, but uh, yeah, something that, uh, on the Cybertruck, something that a lot of people miss. I know it's relatively heinous outside, like if you just glance at it, but a lot of that is because the external metal on it is built to be a frame. So most cars, the frames are on the inside, which constricts the amount of space that you actually have to like be in the car. But on the Cybertruck, the frame is on the outside and that's how they're keeping it. The price, keeping the price so low because it only has like two folds in it. So the like ridiculous design from a functional perspective makes a lot of sense. Why um, do we keep camp on a leash? Because he's a Shiba and I, that's a crappy excuse. But anybody who has a Shiba Inu, which is the species of dog or whatever, the breed of dog that camp is, um, they, I've never met a Shiba owner that can keep their dog off leash at all. And we can with camp a good bit of the time, but he's just flighty. Like if he sees a wild animal, like a deer, one time I had to chase him after a herd of deer for, I don't know how long. Um, but just sometimes he'll blast off. Like if he hasn't had enough exercise, he'll just blast off. So we would like to keep him off leash all the time. And I think as he gets older, um, we'll be able to do that. But for now, he needs to be on a leash a good bit of the time. Your dog looks part fox. Um, we get that a lot. Yes. By the way, he is not here. Um, How can you take a shower in the cold? Oh, it's so nice. If, it's, if you have hot water and it's sunny um, and not windy, it's really nice. There is a little bit of woo saw in the moments where you don't have the hot water streaming on you, but it's so beautiful to shower outside. I think a lot of it is breathing and re like relaxing into the cold rather than like <clears throat> trying to fight it because uh -huh. you're gonna lose. So just kind of drop your breath into your belly and breathe slow and try to relax your muscles rather than trying to fight the cold. And then that makes it a lot more bearable where are some places you want to go in 2020 good question i said this a minute ago but i would like to go see the sequoias um redwoods would yeah be sequoias cool. and redwoods zion would be cool yeah alaska canada what we're thinking New Zealand. is we might go down through california go see the redwoods and sequoias and then like trickle over into utah Maybe go to the Zion Moab area in the winter when it's not so busy. And then kind of maybe go back to Colorado from there or something. I don't know. But we don't really have any specific plans. 
Do you feel more mentally and physically healthy now? Yes. Yes. I think the outdoors have done wonders for my everything. I've always wanted to spend most of my time outside in the forest. When I was a kid, any time that I would go, like, walk through the creek all day or go to the lake or um, go to a camp or whatever it was, I or go on a trip to Colorado, go on a climbing trip, any time that I was coming back to normal life, it was like, why don't I just do this all the time? Because that's what I crave and want to do. So, yeah, this feels a lot more natural to me than the life that I've lived in the past. You guys are all asking a lot of really great, great, great questions. Great questions. <laughs> I'm really happy that you're all here. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing one that's fabulous. I hit a deer and rolled my Subaru five times and walked away from it. That's great. Well, I mean, good and bad. I'm glad that you walked away. It kind yes. of sounds like a bad situation, though. Um... You all have really great questions. Scariest time in the scamp? Oh, that one time we went to that kind of gnarly campsite. Mm -hmm. Usually you can tell what a campsite's going to be like based on the people around and the trash. And, the trash. and there was some trash at this one and some loud people next door who ended up being way loud the wow. next morning. I forgot the next morning. That was crazy. This couple was like breaking up and just screaming at each other at the top of their lungs for oh. like the whole time that we were packing up the scamp to move. Screaming at each other. This that was, was wild. 9 a.m. in the morning, if not earlier. That was the first time and the only time anything like that's ever happened. But the night before, the scary night. Yeah, there was this creepy dude kind of walking around and we could hear him in the bushes back behind the scamp and I like yelled at him like, what are you doing, dude? Get out of here. Um, I think he was probably a homeless guy who had a camp back in there. Yeah. It would make the most sense. But he had a big German Shepherd, and it was just really weird. Yeah, it was a look. Unfortunately, I accidentally left my yoga mat in that area, so... What about recently you saw a wild animal um, clue, if you will? It, oh, a cougar. I walked along some cougar prints. I decided to walk home I shouldn't have it was about seven and a half miles through full forest and I'm a little embarrassed I heard that Baron's dad was kind of upset at me for that <laughs> <laughs> and that's not something that you want to happen um, but I did it and it was, it was fine, but the tracks ended up being a couple of days old. They'd melted in the snow, but I even, I could see the tail prints, and I was thinking, what kind of coyote has like that big of feet? The drag marks from the from their cougar's tail. tail touching the snow. At, that's what I was telling myself was, a coyote, what kind of thing could they be dragging? Um, like, why would they drag it to pick it up, drag it, pick it up? Um, then I saw some small coyote prints alongside these big tracks, and I thought, this is not a coyote. I have to, I have to get out of here. So, um, if any of you follow us on Instagram, you can see I documented this whole thing on my Instagram story that day. I should make a story highlight. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. If any of you uh, go follow me on Instagram at Elsa Ray, and while you're there, follow Baron at Baron Link. Somebody asked Mac or PC for gaming. I always built my own PCs back in the day. Um, and would like upgrade them over time because I think if you are going to game that's like the cheapest way to do it but now I play on a Mac and they are actually making a lot more games for Mac and um, it's like the most efficient system that I could play games on so it makes sense for me and that's where I do like all my work and everything is on my Mac computer and I think the operating system on Apple's computers is preferable to Windows, generally speaking. I think it's a lot more intuitive and stuff. So I much prefer a Mac to a PC, even though it doesn't stand up as well to gaming as a PC would. So back to the cougar thing. If Follow us on Instagram, and I'll put the highlight of the video there.
but it was crazy because I saw the tracks and then I had this whole non road section that I had to cross of snow full fresh snow because it had just snowed like crazy that I walked through then I had to walk through the creek to get back to the stamp. It was stupid. Ridiculous. But Baron was in the town, um, neighboring town like an hour away. Had to be there to get the tires changed so he couldn't come back and get me. Four ninety nine from Liza. Where can I purchase your bracelets? I'll have more on my site, elsaray.com, but currently they are out of stock. Uh, thanks everyone for being patient in the comments. We don't have our awesome moderator, Miss Mary Lou. You guys inspired me, bought my first backpack. Awesome. Cool. Let's see. What Let's else? Let's take a couple more questions and then... We can call it a night? Yeah. It's been a really good one. Ooh, have you watched The Witcher on Netflix? We haven't, but I know that was a really good game. I watched some buddies play it back in the day. And it would probably be... Is it a show? A good show, yeah. We were watching C. Oh, that's good. With mm -hmm. Jason Momoa. And the morning show is really good, too. I'm that's opened up our eyes to how how reality or yeah. news TV works and Jennifer Aniston is awesome. Um, 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 okay, huge question we've been getting is why not go south for the winter? Yeah. And a factor in that is that YouTube loves winter camping. Like that's not the whole of it because we would have done that with or without. But when we make a video in the snow, it's like super fun for us. And it's um, super fun for people to watch. Yeah. And it's like pretty challenging, but at the same time, uh, we have a blast. So we might as well do that since people love to watch it and there's not a lot of that content on YouTube. And when we were in Arizona and uploading summer videos, dirt, we were in Arizona during the winter, uploading videos of warm sunshine, we're in tank tops. While most people are in winter climates, I think it wasn't quite as interesting to yeah. people. Um, it's not their current experience. So watching yeah. that, I think maybe it was two years ago. So the channel has evolved a lot since then, but I, I want to say that when it's winter, I like to watch people experiencing winter. You know what I At mean? At the same time, it, like in Arizona, it was pretty busy too. You know, like we were having to kind of compete for spots to camp. And when you're in the middle of the desert, like trying to find a place to pee that has like not people around is difficult. Yeah, because that's where everybody goes in the winter. It's, yeah. They, everybody goes down to the warmer climates, so it was just a... And a lot of the areas are, like, easy. super flat and wide open, so there's not a lot of interesting hiking or anything around. Yeah. And so to be in these busy areas in the summer, everybody wants to camp in beautiful places in the summer, then to go to where it's still busy... It just isn't exactly our particular, like our preferred style of doing it. Mm -hmm. So in the winter, we can, nobody is around us. And right. that is our favorite. And it's beautiful and quiet and serene. And as long as we have and when we're a way to, in, sorry. as long as we have a way to get into town, get in, in and out and have access to things we need. We're good. We're totally good. And now that we have new snow tires that are like all terrain snow tires. On the Subi, we can do whatever we want. And just being in the snow, I don't know, being snowed in is just fun. Baron, do you do yoga? I did the other day. Well, we're, we're pretty back sore. Kansas City. I, I like, I think yoga is like the, one of the most uh, high R, or highest ROI things that I can do for my body. It feels amazing after I do yoga. I could feel a lot looser and more, um, I don't know, just generally better. I mean, stretching is so underrated. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever stolen your camper? They sure haven't. Oh, stolen from your camper. <laughs> and no. no. That's something that we keep in mind all the time and try to, like, battle off. We are more afraid of people breaking into our camper when we're parked at friends' houses in town 
than we are yeah. when we're out in the woods. Because people who are out there are out doing the same, like wanting to and do the same. We're out in the we woods, are. like maybe five people know where we are in the whole world, you know? And then, but when you're in a city or in a town, people see the, if they're like driving by and see the scamp, a lot more people know where they are. Um, are you full time scampers or do you have sticks and bricks? Uh, we, I have been getting this question a lot from people who don't know what we're doing, and we do do the scamp full time but we take breaks every couple two three months breaks, two three i think is a little soft. breaks in that um we have for a like friend a, who a lets week. us stay yeah. for a week at their place or family comes and we stay with them um we're here for a couple weeks for the holidays um and that really is so nice it puts everything into perspective for us of yeah. why we're doing what we're doing and it also makes all the small things things that used to be small like showers are now so big so it's really interesting kind of uh contrast maybe? yes and it's yeah it's the breaks are obviously nice but we don't have um uh, any other full-time place thankfully we have parents who have Places that we can stay when we come back in the city, and um, yeah. So yes, and no. So uh, yeah, maybe that's a thing to mention if you're traveling full time, um, to be able to like if you get an Airbnb or stay with friends or whatever for a week or a few days every few months, and just kind of like take out all of your gear and reorganize it and dry it out. Um, that's something that we do and it makes it a lot easier and then every time we get back to the scamp or before we even get back to it We're like get us back to the scamp, you know Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm reading comments Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, A lot of people want to know if we smoke marijuana and Occasionally yeah, sometimes not so much lately it's not such a big deal, I don't think, as people make it out to be. We have seen Bigfoot. Every time I walk barefoot, <laughs> I walk barefoot a lot, yeah, even in the colder months, and my prints on the road it look is like so big prints. It's Especially in the snow when it melts, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the cougar prints. Okay. Um, have we ever seen strange lights? Yes. Just recently as we were driving home. I just got a... Oh, my mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> uh, we saw some strange, like, red sort of pulse lights as we were driving home. Uh, that yeah, was... fire. Yeah, it was <laughs> inexplicable. And then a tail of a... A smoke tail like a rocket ship was flying up and curving around yeah. in the sky. It was like nothing that I've ever seen before. And then in Canyon City, Colorado, one time I saw like uh, it looked like twice, three times the brightness of a star. Um, and then it was just like sitting there. It like went away, came back, and then another star sort of came off of it in a very straight line and then another one came off and went another way and another one came off and went another way three different lights and then they really controlled just went out one at a time that was wild but i don't know what either of those were someone bought coconut aminos today cali did those are useful great soy alternative soy is a problem soy is i was talking to chelsea about this yeah i think there's a it's wild for like what so what soy does to your hormones and stuff i always like thought all of that was just okay you know whatever you guys are crazy and hypersensitive but uh soy is what they use to make like um estrogen creams and stuff soy or wild, wild yams um and yeah, it's like a, it turns into estrogen from how you understand it in your body. So it can- It's a phytoestrogen. Yeah. And it actually does that. And I don't think a lot of people know that. And a lot of people eat a ton of soy and don't know that, but kind of interesting. I think there is an agenda to push soy. 
Yeah. But that's a just a theory. We'll maybe get into that some other time. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. Wind or hydro turbines? Yeah. Uh, there's a company called, whoa, uh, what are they called? What's that company? Water Lily? Yeah, that has the little water turbine. I honestly think a wind turbine would probably be more effective because it's hard to park close enough to um, water overnight to make enough power. But, uh, yeah, I think wind would be the way because then you could run that all night long, all day, and then you don't have to be that close to water to generate uh, power. But, yeah, I've looked into those. There's just not a lot of um, options available right now for wind or water power generation. A lot of you guys are commenting on soy stuff. And, yes, there's totally, just like there's um, high-quality grains, there's high-quality corn. Um, there is high-quality fermented soy for sure. Yeah, I'm not but at all trying to be an expert. I think here, most people are most people are saying all the different things soy is in. It's a yeah, crazy. It's everywhere, especially if you're trying to eat like vegetarian or vegan. Even, um, yeah, it's a hard thing. But yeah, if you're having issues with different functions or whatever, maybe look into <laughs> your soy consumption. Uh, there's so many questions. I just like reading them. It's fun to just yeah, read the Yeah, I wish we could just <laughs> sit and read it and not respond. That's interesting. Oh, no. No. Did you try to hide a comment and add them as a moderator? That would be funny. Yeah. Um, do you have a P.O. box? Yeah, we, well, generally get a P.O. box. Um, I would love to get things from people, but we just can't. We have no space. Like, even a bunch of snacks or whatever. Like, the trash thing is something that we're always keeping in mind. And, yeah, I, it's just really hard to get any gifts from anyone. So, we're sorry that we can't, but we just kind of can't. Um, yeah. You could always, um, well, no. Uh, just email us if you really have something that we have to have, and um, we'll talk to you about it. All right, a few more questions, and then we can be yeah. good for the night. Anybody have any fascinating questions? And then all the questions come flooding. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any regrets with the Cubic Mini? Not really. Maybe that we would have gotten the bigger one. But now that we're burning compressed logs, if that's we, not as much of an well, issue. Well, the thing is, if we had the Grizzly, it would be nice to put more wood in. But it would burn us out of the scamp. Yeah. It gets so hot in that tiny space. If it's, if it's in the 30s, like even low 30s, we don't even need the heater. Once it gets into the 20s and teens... That's when it's super comfortable to have the heater constantly It's burning. nice to not have a propane heater. It's dry yeah. heat. We could fashion a propane heater with vents and in out, right? And then it would be no big deal. But yeah. the wood stove is great. Dry heat that we can cook on all the time. It's great. We love it. I don't know. It's. I don't know. Maybe there might be other brands that we could have used, but... With, um, like, I've seen more rectangle wood stoves that would give you a little bit more space on top. But the Cubic Minis are just super cute. And one day it would be, f like, if you just had one of those in a bedroom or something, how fun would that be? Yeah, it'd be incredible. I Useless. want to have a wood stove in any house that I live in from now on. They're just the best thing. Uh, how do you make enough money to live the way that you do? We've answered this before, but honestly, the short answer is... Living like this is a lot. What? Sorry. That was to say we cut expenses. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have expenses, you don't have to be working for as much money. Like, we're not paying 
our cost of living is so low that we're not working to make money to pay for that. Right. And we're still saving plenty of money. Um, have you thought about producing a cookbook? Yes, we are working on that. Do you guys miss watching TV? Well, we can watch TV on our iPads. And I think watching TV is different for most people now, too. It's yeah. watching series on subscription programs. If you're watching, like, standard news stations and standard programming... Standard cable TV maybe is you not... Should maybe stop and see how your anxiety level changes. Not necessarily stop, but I think... Maybe um, stop. It's, it's nice... I like, or it's, I like to watch... Netflix and things like that. Yeah. We watch series all the time. It's our favorite thing to binge watch series. Series. Yeah. Okay. Eyebrow dance. Who farts the most? My I fart Who loud. Who farts the most? You fart. What did I say in the video? Yours, you yours are loud, but, but mine stink. stink. <laughs> I have high okay. pressure farts. How old are you each? Pretty 28. old. Okay, this will be Guilty the last one. Guilty snack This will be the last one, okay. Also brownies. What's, what's after scamp life? We don't know. Okay, maybe that should More be More scamp last life, one. just like on a piece of land that we buy eventually. SJ Goodson, 2099. Thanks for sharing your story and love. Thank you. Um, Ram Das died today. Mad respect. Yeah. Likewise. Baron, what's your best MacGyver fix? My best MacGyver tool is uh, Gear Ties by uh, Night Eyes, the company. They're out of, I think, Denver or Boulder or something. But they're like a wire, like if you were looking at wire hangers, it's like that, but wrapped in a soft rubber. So you can take it and twist it around anything. And they're like as useful as duct tape. What are some things you no longer take for granted after moving into the scamp and this will be the end? Okay. Things we no longer take for granted. Um, running water. Showers. Uh, not having to move, like just <laughs> take Stay having all your place. stuff and not having to repack it ever. Uh, that's something I never thought of being a useful thing, but yeah, now it is. Being able to, able to do laundry within my own home. Wow, what a luxury that is. Mm -hmm. Going to laundry mats, but we batch all of our clothes and go to the laundry mat. So it's like, we do laundry once a month. Unlimited power. Yeah. But then also all these things I wouldn't trade what we have in order to have those things back. Maybe, and most likely I will in the future want that. Mm -hmm. um, but at this time, the freedom of being able to wake up and be in the forest surrounded by nobody and moving the solar panels so that we can be on our laptops that day, totally worth it. Or taking a shower outside in the snow. Yeah. Um, Oh, lots of that's things. That's more than worth it. Um, yeah, lots of things. People, like friends and stuff. You don't take Don't them. take them for granted anymore. Because when we're far away from them, it's, I don't know, there are friends that I would like to hang out with in person that I don't get to. Yeah, family. How much uh, wattage a gaming PC takes? I took that for granted for a long time. My power supply was like 600 watts. I could only use that for like an hour in the scamp and I would kill the whole battery. Having our devices not die overnight in the winter. Yeah, was that was nice. That I, it was nice, yeah. Centralized <laughs> heat and cooling is cool too. I mean, there's a lot. But I don't want those <laughs> yeah, things. I just right. like appreciate that they're a thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Well, it's almost Christmas. I'm, I think I will upload that video of my family um, as long as I get it uploaded, I've been putting but it off for a long time. don't say that you'll do it on Christmas because then you'll put your, you'll be stressed out to do that. So just like when Elsa gets the video done, she'll post it. And so. I hope <laughs> that that everyone can enjoy it and appreciate it, even though it's not necessarily going to be scamp. 
and then we will be back at the scamp um, sometime right after New Year's and we're gonna take it out um, we might go camp in the snow again we'll see if we can find a cool place yeah I think that would be fun for us and for everyone yeah Somebody needs a drink, Mama Link. <laughs> Who said that? And somebody in the I chat. I still have my drink. Uh, big thanks to Mama and Papa Link for letting us do this here. Yeah. With the fire behind and our backs. And thanks for joining us in the video. Oh, wait. <laughs> you didn't. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. And thanks for all the donations. You guys rock. It's amazing that you donate to us ever, and we really appreciate it. So much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, good night, everyone. Have a happy, happy holiday. Uh, yeah, All any holiday that you celebrate, celebrate it well. We love you. Bye.